All right, guys, I'm sorry about the off-centered camera here, um, but these two games are too good not to post to the internet, so we're going to watch them. Uh, this is the fourth round of play at the 20-sided store Netrunner tournament that took place on April 6, 2014. I'm on the right. My opponent, Tony, is on the left. Great guy. Really strong player. Um, you know, I, I don't, we don't see him too often, but... You know, uh, he beat me at a, at a, at a previous 20-sided tournament. This is the fourth round, like I said. I'm coming into this round with two losses. There's a lot of players in the tournament right now with two losses. But Tony is the only player, at least right now, and uh, going into this round with one loss. So it's he controls his own destiny. He wins two games, and he wins, right? Um, as for me... In order for me to have a chance of winning this tournament, I have to win both games. If I win both games, it's likely that I'll win the tournament, but it is not 100%. Someone else could win two games and possibly beat me on tiebreakers. Um, but my first tiebreaker is really strong. I have one corp loss and one runner loss. And then playing Tony, who is the top player, right, um, probably would give me the strongest tiebreakers. So... I don't necessarily control my own destiny, but I probably do. But I have to win both. If I split, um, Tony may still win. I can't win if I split because I'm at least losing to him, right? He's already a game ahead on me. Um, but I give everyone else in the room a chance to win. If we split other people in the room who win who, both of their games in this round would have a chance to win, um, which would actually put me way below, right? So I'd be below Tony and below them. So, here we go. It's my Kate versus his MBN. MBN's popular these days. He usually plays Jinteki, but I guess he wanted to win. <laughs> or he said he wanted to win, so he's going to play MBN just once. And, well, so far, I guess it's been working for him because he only lost one game all day. My opening draw, I rarely mulligan um, with my runner deck. It's just every time, even when I'm just sitting at home drawing cards or using the internet deck builder and drawing cards, every five cards I see is beautiful. But this time, two Plaskreets in the opening hand, right? So two Plaskreets is a great... If I was playing against some Waylon thing that I knew was going to scorch me, I would have kept that hand all day. But I am just for some reason... I mean, he could be playing a Scorch MBN, in which case I'm kind of screwed. But... I just, you know, I went with my gut and I said, no, he's not playing that. He's doing the same kind of fast advance MBN that I'm playing. Um, so I'm going to throw those Scorches away and try to get better cards. And I got somewhat better cards. Okay, he ices up and installs. I'm going to be trying to count his clicks with the blue things because he doesn't have his own click counters but it's hard to concentrate. I run, there's a pad campaign. I know that when I have pad campaign and people let me keep it, I lose. I mean, I win. So I'm not going to let him have his pad campaign. And now I'm going to try to run his centrals to make him res ice. Oh, a Draco. That's actually somewhat annoying, right? It's, it's good and bad. It's good because I play Parasite and I can just blow it out. It's bad because this is click two of the first run of the right of, of the first turn. I see a pad campaign, and I don't want to take a tag because that would have taxed me to hell. He didn't boost the trace on the Draco with his free MBN credits, which was really strange because he only left it be trace two. So I'm happy to pay one credit to get in. Um, but if he would have just boosted it to four, I would have had to take the tag, and then right and the run i would have taken a credit and removed the tag i wouldn't have seen his pad campaign i you know i, I guess there was a breaking news in his hand i might have stolen right so i guess he, he took a little risk there i think that was a misplay i would have used both nbn credits to boost the trace on the draco to four well now that draco is gone and i'm running i should be running hq right yeah <laughs> annoyingly oh man all these things I can't trash. He's got marked accounts and pad campaign. One again. Marked accounts again. Annoyingly, I can't get an early data sucker going on here. My deck is all about early data sucker. That's that's where all my power comes from. And not getting one early, right? I mean, look, look how many successful runs I got. My data sucker would be rocking the house right now. But um, 
was just unable to get it started. So, yeah. He set up those two remotes. I basically assume that they're pad campaign marked accounts because that's what I saw when I ran HQ. Uh, so he res the pad campaign. He starts drawing with Jackson. He's checking his HQ ice. And he's going to res and fill the marked accounts. See some agendas in there. Not a lot of ice, though. His ice is light, which is not good against Parasite. Okay, so he's, made, he's, he's going to start up protecting a remote, but not with any of those cards in it. So once I can empty this KD a bit... Uh, all right, SMC. I'm thinking about turning that SMC into a data sucker, but... I might need it for something, you know. Who knows what I'm going to need it for. Okay, so I got to get some money because I'm already looking at that pad campaign. Like, that needs to go. And Jackson also needs to go. Ooh, he's drawn. And there's agendas in there. Look at that. NAPD. Oh, I see like four agendas in there. Wow. So he's dropping a sand sand, and I think he just put an ash on it. What do I got? I got the same old thing, indexing, inti. All right, so I'm running the remote that has two things in it. There's an Eli. All right, the lesson here, I think this misplay here, is Eli is only good for central servers, right? Uh, I don't think it's a good ice for a remote server because, I mean, I let it end the run there, but you're going to see a lot of times this game, I'm going to double-click it. Um, Oh, there's an agenda. All right, so I did. He didn't res HQ, even though he's got a fistful of agendas. I guess one of them I can't steal. I guess you know me getting the one pointer lucked out. That is bad news. That was just bad luck for him. I ran R and D. He didn't res Astro Script. Boom. <laughs> Boom. That's that's just the kind of swing that happens. It's a card game. Uh, I don't know if he could have resed or should have resed, but he didn't res. All right, he's going to res his Sansan San and score a Beal. See, if I wouldn't have run that and taken the Astro Script right there, that Beal would be an Astro Script, and the next turn, there'd be something else out. So, um, now that I emptied KD and I have a lot of money, I'm going to run, try to trash Jackson. He's not going to let me trash Jackson, he's going to use it. That's fine by me, it saves me three credits. I think in that case, were those three cards, you have to ask yourself, were those three cards really worth Jacksoning, right? And if they're not, I'm going to let the runner pay three to trash him for the tax, right? That's a whole KD click worth. That's a lot. Um, and now you leave me with nine. That's enough to trash the marked accounts and the pad campaign, if I so chose to do so. I really just want to get rid of the pad campaign. I mean, look, Look. even though he has a pad campaign out, he is broke. That's weird, right? Isn't that weird? It's because he just spent it resing a sand sand. Oh, no. Oh, no. See, because he had no money, I indexed R&D freely and got another Astro script, right? Whew. Because he had no money, I'm just like, oh. And he didn't res the thing in R&D before when he had money, so he has no money. I'm just like, pff, indexing, take Astro script. Not good. Not good for the corp here. Okay, he's putting some other kind of ice in R&D. But I mean, I already know what's there. So, you know, now I, it, that's the best thing about indexing is that you use it and then you can actually take a break from R&D and you know it's safe to build your rig and just worry about remotes and HQ for like until they draw through. See, pad campaign gone. All right, get that out of here. I'm going to let him keep marked accounts because marked accounts at least cost him a click to fill up. If he starts like constantly filling it up all the time, then I'm definitely going to go and trash it. But, you know, I think he forgets or, or he, like he doesn't have the clicks to spare to fill it up a lot of the time. Um, so because of that, okay, so he scores another Beal off the Sand Sand. Oof. Um, all right, so because of that, 
uh, I'm not going to be so you know eager to spend five trashing the marked accounts and slowing myself down uh, unless he forces me to. And right now, he didn't even fill it up, uh, and he's broke. So I'm going to run and double-click the Eli, and I'm going to trash that Sand Sand instead. Right? Trashing the Sand Sand is still a big play when I'm at five and he's at four, and he's only got uh, two Beals, no Astros. Right? As an Ash, I don't have enough credits for the Ash. I let it stay. He didn't res it. I don't think he could have resed it. See, if that was a hard... Look at this. I haven't had... I've been doing all this stuff. Everything I've been doing has been with, what, a Katie Jones and money, right? I've just been beating him with money and runs. Um, you know, the Eli d for doesn't force me to get and install a breaker to get into the remote. I can just double-click it. Um, yeah, so... Just how it is. I guess another thing that hurt him, I don't know, is he not playing? I mean, he's, he, there has to be hedge fund in his deck, right? Who doesn't play without hedge fund? But is, does he not have the hedge fund and the sweeps? It's, it's like the mark, you know, I play three hedge, three sweep, three pad, right? Um, but if he's just doing marked accounts and pad campaign, right? That's probably, you know, I, don't, I haven't seen a sweeps week, have I? Does he have sweeps week? I don't know. Maybe I'm hallucinating. Maybe he had one. I don't know, but he's, he's having a hard time getting his money back. All right, now he's got some money. He filled marked accounts and took two, I think. But I emptied Katie, and that's a lot more than he's got, right? Thinking about getting the marked accounts, but instead, I double-click the remote. See, I don't even need to get any breakers. I keep all this money to use on the remote. So... Um, here you're going to see something interesting. So this is this is some rules that are important for people, right? So the timing at the end of the run, this is something that, you know, I mean, it's you don't want to be jerky about rules uh, too much. But in this case, um, this is the one rule that I'm a real stickler for, right? Because it was done to me, right? Someone did this to me because I got the rule wrong, and I was wrong. So now when other people get the rule wrong, I don't let them get away with it either. I ran the Eli. I double clicked. I said, I'm going to access. Then it's his, then he has one opportunity to res and use paid abilities. Okay. That's when you can use Jackson Howard. That's when you can res Ash. That's when you can do whatever, right? He didn't do any of that. He, he said, okay, which one you want to access? And I said, I'll access the Ash first. So I accessed the Ash first and I trashed it. Right. And then I said, now I'm going to access the Jackson Howard or the other card, which turned out to be Jackson Howard. And he's like, OK, I want to use this. I'm like, no, 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 no. Your chance to use that was before when I said I was accessing. And it does matter because, right, you might, you know, th that'll change your decision about which card to access first or which one to trash or who knows what. Right. So, um, yeah, he was like, tried to use the Jackson. I'm like that. The time for that is gone. I'm not going to let you. So I'm going to trash it. And so now things get really itchy, right? So one Jackson has been used. It's out of the game. I just trashed one on the table. Then I ran HQ and trashed the third one. Jackson is gone. Jesus does not save. Um, okay, there's a real ice. See, why wasn't the Eli on R&D and the wraparound on the remote? Well, now I have an Inti. <laughs> so I run R&D and pay one. And... Why didn't he res that before? Well, I mean, when he had zero credits, we know why he didn't res it. But he could have resed it when he had, um, you know, the, earlier than that. He had a chance. I don't know. I think maybe on the turn he didn't res it. He wanted he had exactly enough credits to use his sand sand or something like that. That's why he went to zero after using it. He had exactly enough, and he would if he would have spent the one on the resing that, then he wouldn't have been able to use the sand sand. So, um, okay. I have an SMC for a Parasite, and I have an Inti for the Wraparound. So uh, he has to put another Ice in R&D, because I'm at five points. He's at four, and he has no secure remote and no means of fast advancing right now. There you go, Hedge Fund. He's back in the money, at least. So I'm just trying to recover some economy here, right? Um, just have to get some money. Okay, now the remote is maybe getting short up here. I mean, he's got enough to res a toll booth at this point.
Yep. So I'm parasiting out of hand the uh, quandary, dropping the same old thing, and filling Katie. He's got two NAPDs in hand, a sand sand and some ice. But if I empty KD, run, double click the Eli, it all depends on what the ice and that ice he keeps looking at. It depends what that is, whether I can trash the sand sand, which I absolutely have to do um, under the assumption that if he gets a sand sand, he's got enough money to put out an Astro and that's the end of the game, right? The third Astro, assuming he gets the third Astro, right? Hmm. Hmm. But yeah, he can't, you know, normally he could be like install NAPD advance, but no, I have if I empty KD, I can pay to take that NAPD. So that is that's not a good situation, right? Oof, so he's gonna ice up even more. I'm gonna empty KD. And run R and D as a caduceus. Ooh, that's not friendly. Man, it really hurt me not having um, any kind of uh, data sucker this game. Really hurt me. If I would have had data sucker, I would have been fly. I would have parasited that caduceus. Do 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 do. Probably would have parasited that Eli too. I also don't have any clone chips. Um, so I'm letting him have the three credits on the Caduceus, even though it was only Trace 3. I think that was a mistake. I probably should not have let him have the credits on the Caduceus. Um, but I think he maybe makes a mistake here, uh, bumping up the and the run trace too high on the Caduceus. Right? He let the credit trace be three. I should have paid two credits to prevent him from having three. He's making the end the run trace at least four using the recurring thingies. I guess I'm at five points. He doesn't want to even let me have one access. I think he's making it five or six. Yes, I think it's five. So I'm not paying four, five credits to get in when I've only got six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I see. So if I pay five to get in i'll only have four left yeah it's it's not a it's not something i'm gonna do so i end the run it was click one or two running r and d i think i emptied katie and ran so now i'm gonna test run the fem put it on the caduceus that's the only efficient way i have to beat caduceus with the cards available and the money available to me right now um, and then I think my last click, I'm going to scavenge the fem to keep it out. So now I can get into R&D for three credits. On future turns. Yep, scavenge. So I'm keeping it there, right? So now I can get into R&D for three credits. I think I have an indexing in hand. I'm going to try to win the game with it, I guess, because I know there's no Jackson Howards left in the game, so indexing is totally protected, assuming I can get into R&D. Right? Indexing is a super safe play. He's got money again. Mm -mm. So he can definitely res those ice on the remote. It might actually be protected now if he drops his sand sand, but he doesn't have... You know, because the two Astros and two Beals are already out. It's like, what agenda is he going to score with the Sand Sand? He needs that final Astro. He's holding two NAPDs. I guess that's the bad part of NAPD, right? Is it's a little hard to score. He, you know, he just, he wasn't able, I don't know if he's running the same, like, breaking news. I mean, he has breaking news in the deck, because I've scored one, right? But I wonder if he's doing three NAPDs. Um, and because I have three breaking news in mine, you know, so 
you know, I get often I'll be able to do breaking news, closed accounts, breaking news, trash, Katie, right? But he hasn't been able to do that this game. Um, there's an Astro in his hand. He's got he's got it going. It, it, the third one, it appeared. Um, he installed something. And he took some credits. Okay. I have to run HQ. I'm, assu I'm running HQ. Ooh, I have to pay the toll. I have to run HQ assuming that he put down a sand sand, which means the winning and the, the agendas are in his hand, right? So now I'm going to run R&D as an Eli. Oof, that's rough. That is rough. Am I going to do it? I should probably end the run. Nope, I double clicked and I paid three. Seeing a card, not a winning card. He tempted me with that Eli. I should probably have let the Eli end the run. Knowing that his, you know, I could have run the remote, try to make him spend more money uh, to get him low enough. Yeah, see, I, I actually succeeded anyway, right? Is he didn't have eight credits. Oh, well, now he's got money. But <laughs> uh, if he doesn't have eight credits, he can't use what I'm pretty sure is a Sansan -san to score. Um, so now he might have eight. But by running the you know the remotes, I was able running the toll booth and the Eli, I was able to make him pay. Uh, what am I gonna do here? All right, because of the Eli being too expensive, indexing is out, right? Because even if I make the successful indexing run, I can't afford to run again, really. Hmm, but I'm still thinking that, you know, he does have a, um, you know, if that's a sand set on the table, as I believe it to be, because it was an Astro or something, it would have been scored already, right? Um, if it was an agenda, it would have been scored already. <laughs> the, oh, here it comes, he's got it, right? So I was right about it being a sand, if it was, if it was anything but a sand set, it would have been scored already. But because it was, oh, there, man, six and an Astro token, it's going to be game over, right? You can just take an NAPD. Install advance advance, Astro token, game over. But he is flat broke. Zero credits. None. No credits to speak of. He needs to start his turn with two credits to score one of those NEPDs with the Sand Sand and the Astro script. Uh, or draw breaking news. So first two clicks, same old thing, scavenge the fem to move it over to HQ, right? I have to make sure that he doesn't have that winning agenda in hand. Um, there's an Ash, which... I trash to re increase the odds of touching that agenda in HQ because I still have enough to run HQ again with my last click. And I see NAPD, so I go, oh shit, he's going to win next turn. Then I go, wait, he's not going to win next turn. He doesn't have two credits to win next turn, right? Think about what a difference it would have made if I didn't let him have those Caduceus credits earlier. Um, you know, it would have delayed him a whole turn. Um... Uh, so there, there's a... He can't play a Sweep Sweep because he does not have a credit. So he's going to take a credit and then play the Sweep Sweep. No, just take another credit, right? Uh, I can't afford to trash the Sand Sand. So, you know, my only hope is to take the NAPD contract that I know is in HQ. I know it's there. I just saw it. So I empty Katie and I pay one to get in and I know I can do this twice. And I only have to do it once. I have enough credits. That's it. GG. One turn away from losing. Wow. Oof. Even when both Astro scripts get stolen and you only score two Beals, you can make a serious comeback. That is robust. But yeah, I knew I was going to lose. Um, I took six credits off KD. I had three clicks left. That, and it only costs one to get into HQ. So I run HQ. It costs one to get in. I have five left. I can score an NEPD if I get one. I run again. It costs one. I have four left. I can score an NEPD if I get one. So I was giving myself two chances to get what I thought was a one in five shot of touching the card. right? So two chances of one in five uh, is pretty good. Right? That's like buying two lottery tickets 
that each have a 1 in 5 chance of winning. That's a 2 in 5 chance of winning right there. Um, those are pretty good odds. Uh, but I didn't realize that on top of that, there were actually two NEPDs in his hand, at least when I was playing, right? So my odds of winning were 4 in 5 there with that play on the last turn. Um, that's just how it goes. Yeah, um, you know, remember what happened with the Jackson Howards, right? That prevented him from drawing deep into agendas when he had a chance. Um, I misplayed letting him have some Caduceus money. He went flat broke, um, rezzing the sand send to score that third Astro, which I probably would have also done. <laughs> I can't blame him. Um, I, when I ran those other servers, he rezzed the ice, uh, delaying his ability to score by bringing him under the credits necessary. I trashed all his pad campaigns, but let him keep marked accounts, which wasn't enough to really get him back in the money. Um, if I would have let him have those pad campaigns, I would have been, even though it cost me like my last cent sometimes, I would have been hosed. Um, a lot going on in that game, you know? Um, and my deck was running at pretty much like half efficiency, right? I didn't have any data suckers. I could, I barely parasited anything. Um, you know, I was, all the work was pretty much done by Katie Jones. It was, Katie Jones was like the only card I used that whole game, pretty much. Um, except I think Inti and a couple Parasites. And the, uh, the Femme was actually pretty big. The test run scavenge and the same old thing scavenge the Femme to move it around uh, to get reasonable accesses. Um, you know, I wouldn't have gotten an HQ without that, on that toll booth. You know, that's two games against MVN where we've seen someone uh, Femme the, the toll booth on HQ, so... All right. Now it's his Kate and my MBN, the mirror match, the mirror match. I think the, you know, his deck is pretty similar to mine in some ways, but his is more of an Atman, uh, you know, Atman based. Um, I think he uses Magnum Opus. I think he uses Desperado. Um, I use Grimoire Parasite, right? So... Got to do some serious shuffling here. Serious shuffling. Let's check out my draw. Cards that are not on screen. Yeah, sorry again about it being off center. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on that <laughs> in the future. Uh, you know, double checking to make sure everything's lined up. The new camera I'm gonna get in a, you know next month, early next month, is going to have a tilty, flippy screen, so I can actually, um, you know, I won't have to, like, get up on the table behind the camera to look at the screen and to figure out if it's aimed properly, right? It'll be much easier to line up. Stall and Stall Hedge Fund, great play. What am I, Wayland? Sure gamble. This game's going good for everyone. Run, perfect play. That's he's looking like me. I let him in. Nothing. Runs HQ. I'm going to res that toll booth immediately. I think I must have a fistful of agendas. <laughs> I also kind of like that it cost him three credits um, on that first turn there, right? I took away most of his sure gamble, but it cost me eight. And he drops a mem chip. Okay, I use my last credit to put on R&D and take two. And he draws some cards and takes some money. Sweep. Thanks for drawing those cards. Back in the game. After I spent all that on toll booth, I got money again. And I draw some cards. I'm drawing cards because, you know, he's a shaper. He could be like test run scavenge right now and start breaking into HQ. Um, you know, try to grab my agendas. I got to dilute. Got to dilute that hand. And oh, is that exactly what he's going to do? And in the other games you saw, the Femme toll booth HQ... Uh, came late in the game. Here, it's coming immediately. Right out of the gate. And, you know, in a, in a sense, drawing the cards dilutes the HQ, but hey, I drew cards. I might be loaded on agendas now. Season RSVP. And he runs again. 
And he takes my veal. So, took my veal. And scavenge. Yep, the femme is free. Okay, HQ is vulnerable. Well, I'll put some kind of protection on there. And take some more money. I mean, I don't know why he would be scared not to run HQ again at this point. Yep, Desperado. Okay. I'm thinking about installing that card, but deciding not to. Drawing instead. Yeah, see, this is you know that's more of what I was talking about uh, in some of my other games. Is, is if you're going to draw at some point during your turn. And you're about, you know, it's like if you're going to do a turn that's install, take a credit, draw, don't do that. Instead, draw, install, take a credit. Because maybe that thing you draw will change your mind. Maybe another option will appear. So if you're going to draw, draw first. Draw first. So there, I drew first. He's infiltrating. It's a pad campaign. I guess you know. I guess because he doesn't, we don't play that often. Uh, he he like that could have been a snare. He was he was slightly worried. Um, I guess if he has really good cards in his hand uh, and he's got holding an infiltration, it's not too bad, right? Um, but yeah, all right. So I res the pad campaign, mandatory draw. I'm just score breaking news. Why do I just score breaking news? I do that pretty rarely. I do that if I'm going to win the game with it, if I'm at six points or something like that. But it's because my hand is just loaded with agendas. And um, right, I just wanted to reduce the density of agendas in my hand. And scoring a point isn't bad either. <laughs> Put it in a safe place in my score pile. And he trashes my pad campaign. See, that's a win for me on that. Because look, he's got three credits left, and how is he? Ha what way does he have to get credits back, right? Um, I'm gonna put something on archives. Oh no, install, draw two, draw first. And then, yep. See, look, because I drew first. I remember to draw first. I made a different decision than icing up archives. All right, a sharpshooter. Woo, that's going to not make it easy, right? I mean, I get the sharpshooter is a smart play there, actually, because if I score breaking news out of hand like that, that's sort of signaling archer, which some people do that, right? Um, people do that. So he runs archives. I think I threw agendas away. Or did he run Jackson? Whichever one he ran, um, I used Jackson. I think get my money back. Yeah, I think he must have run Jackson because uh, I used it to get those transactions back. But yeah, scoring breaking news out of hand. That's an archer signal. That's saying, like, I'm not using this for closed accounts. I'm using this to res an archer. So he's got a sharpshooter. Boom, install that. Right? No, no archer worries. Smart play matches, you know, you, you can see watching the video how that makes sense, but yeah, I don't have Archer. But that's, you know, if you're playing against someone who doesn't know your deck, that's like really high level play is doing behaviors that signal that your, your deck is doing something else, right, than what it's actually doing, right? It's like I have a Wayland deck that's 100% program trashing. No scorches, no combos, no nothing. It's just all about program trashing. That's all it does. But in the early phase of that game, the way you play it is you get tons of money because Corporate Shrubber Shooter and other cards like that are expensive. So when you start out playing the deck, it looks like you're getting a bunch of money for Scorch, right? for Seasource or whatever, and combos. So people playing against you who don't know the deck... From just from what they see, the information they gather, until they get to the mid game, they think they're going to get scorched. So they play like they're going to get scorched. They slow down, they don't run, they install their plaskreets, right? And then they run. And then you trash the programs because they didn't, they thought you were going to do something different. And here, I guess inadvertently, I made it look like 
you know, I was going to snare when I put the pad campaign down. I made it look like I was going to archer when I scored the breaking news out of hand uh, when I'm doing neither of those things. Uh, I was thought there was a pop-up window in HQ. I guess it wasn't. Oh, uh, it took my other breaking news. I was going to score that out of hand also. But I guess that wasn't meant to be because now I'll score to Gilehands from behind my wraparound. That Gilehands is key. That Gila hands was so key. Right? Because look. You know, he's having trouble getting money. But I am also having trouble getting money. Right? He trashed my fad campaign. Which basically makes us both poor. That's the road he went down. Rather than me rich and him rich, it's both poor. So, um, I need money from somewhere. So... Gila hands all. I think that's also maybe why I didn't. Maybe I could have res the ice and HQ and didn't RSVP because um, I needed to keep three credits to be able to score that Gila hands. Right on my turn. So I'm feeling my wraparound is pretty safe. So I'm gonna install Gila hands. Yes, look at that money. Infiltrate. Astro script. This is a bad play here by me, just going straight out for the Astro script behind the wraparound, thinking I was so safe, right? Basically challenging him, like, you, Shaper, can you do anything about this? Is there anything you can do, Shaper Man, to get through one ice? Is there a barrier breaker anywhere in your deck and you have a way to get it? Yeah, I have, I have that, yeah. Watch this. I'm going to test run this Corroder. <laughs> He's got tons of memory. Two mem chips and a Desperado. Right, he's got three free memory. Run. Take my Astro Script. So yeah, I mean, you know, test run. If that was a Sansan, -san, right? Test run, Corroder, and run. He wouldn't have been able to trash the Sansan -san because of money. Or even if it was a pad campaign. So I would have made him waste a test run and waste a bunch of resources on that. And then actually, that would have might have created a window for me to... So that was a misplay by me, right? Um, by putting the Astro there, and good play on him. I mean, that's a good use of infiltration against a non-trap deck, right? And now the score is 5-2, to two, not in my favor. Install, install, install. Draw Corroder. Install Corroder. Run there. No res. He pays one to break the wraparound, gets it back, and it's sand sand he can't trash. See, that's what I should have done the previous turn. Run there, pad campaign. You can't trash that either. Yep. Should have reversed the order of those plays there. Should have... I guess I got a little excited because he was running HQ. I wanted to get the Astro out of there. I felt like it was safer behind the wraparound than behind the Fem toll booth. I don't know. But yeah, now my barriers are worthless. Well, not totally worthless, but he's got a Corroder, so. And the score is 5-2. to two. He's going for R&D. He breaks my ice wall. I think this is his last click. Which matters a lot because that ice is Ichu 1.0. And I have just enough credits to res it, so I do. He uses the sharpshooter. See, once he played the sharpshooter, I didn't res it early in the game because, you know, why? You don't want to do that. I waited for him to have a bunch of programs. And then when he put the sharpshooter down, right, even though that was an anti archer play, it actually ended up being an anti Ichi play. But I'm like, you know what? I'm going to res it, make him use the sharpshooter. Because now, if he wants to break Ichi, woo, it's good, right? It'll, he'll get through cheap once, but he's not going to get through cheap again. I guess he could clone ship that sharpshooter. Who's got more than one? No one's got more than one in their deck. That'd be crazy. Um, right? That's going to be way expensive for him to deal with that Ichi from now on. And he can't give up his programs, right? I already have solid barriers keeping him out. Um, he can't let me trash anything. So he runs Jackson, and I'm going to let him trash it because I wanted to pay the tax. Right, if he trashes Jackson, he can't trash Pad Campaign. Pad Campaign, mandatory draw.
And I've only used one Jackson so far. I've got one left, so the one that's left can rescue the one that is in the trash. All right, now I have to defend R&D. Right, he can sort of get in there <laughs> a little bit. Like, he could run, pay a credit, and triple click and basically run R&D every turn. Oh, and now he plays Magnum Opus. No, my worst enemy. But I think the mistake he makes here is he has Magnum Opus, which is my worst enemy, right? I spend all my money to score an Astro with my Sand Sand. Um, is that he sort of tries to run as quick... I mean, he has. He, it's sort of weird, right? He's at five points, so he only needs to get one two-pointer to win. And there's two Beals and an Astro left in the deck, and any PDs as well, right? So there's plenty of two-pointers for him to get. Um... But what he sort of does is he gets just enough money to run and then runs. And he sees one card, right? Um, and it costs him a lot of money and a lot of clicks to be able to run with that magnum opus. Whereas you notice that uh, when against in the game against Kit, right, he would take huge piles of money because I couldn't do anything. It's like what, you know, I couldn't, without the Astro token um, and without the living Sansan, San, right? Um, like I just had to hold things in my hand. I couldn't, you know, I was, I was, I was controlled. I was under control here. I'm not controlled. He doesn't have enough money and enough stuff, enough programs set up to, you know, control me. I've got a res sand sand. I've got a res pad campaign. I've got, um, unresed ice. I've got enough money to res them, right? He doesn't have every kind of breaker. R&D is actually quite taxing to get into safely. So, you know, he basically gets all his money and then runs and sees a card. Maybe he'll win with it, right? That kind of situation. And then he's taxed, right? Even though he's got a magnum opus, mine, which is the thing you need to beat me. So, a Caduceus, very taxing um, against his current setup of Femme. It'll cost him four credits to break both subroutines with Femme. Right, really strong against his current rig. He's using a lot of data suckers to get into R and D, and he's only getting one back at the end. All right, the data suckers would make it cheap for him to get in there, but the um, he has to spend like one, two, three at least, and he's gonna get back one. So then suddenly the access get way expensive. And he's seeing one card each, right? Usually want an interface or something. Yep. He breaks both Caduceus subroutines. Doesn't want to let me have the money. Probably a good idea because I could use that money right now. Breaks the Ice Wall and for one credit, he breaks the Ichi for two uh, Data Suckers and three credits. Oh, and he got a breaking news. Wow. So four, it's six to four, but I have an Astroscript token and a Res Sansan. Ooh, man, this is close. This is close. I mean, when, when you're that close to winning, right, as he is, um, I mean, right, it's you, you kind of want to do that. Just just run all you can. Even runs archives to make sure. That's a Roto Turret I threw away. Useless when he has a Femme on the table. You know. Whew. All right, hedge fund. I got some money now. And block up R&D even more. So I guess I'm not seeing the agendas, right? Um, and he's got a magnum opus, and he can get into R&D. So I'm just trying to make it as expensive as possible so he does it less often. Um, I don't have a Jackson to power draw here. I'm just regular drawn. Regular drawn here. And I install something on top of the sand sand. And I play Sweep Sweep. So I got money now. Good money. 
He's got Matt. You know, with the Magnum Opus, you think he would have trashed the pad campaign by now, right? It's not protected at all. Um, but yeah, but the other thing is, in this situation, right? Code gates for him are not good, right? Um, and I have mostly code gates in my deck, but for some reason, I don't have a lot of code gates on the table. <laughs> don't have code gates on the table. Yeah, he's got plenty of memory. Another femme. Another femme. He just installs it straight up. I think he just installed it straight up, right? Or did he test? No, I think he just installed it. Did he pay the nine or not? I think he paid it. And it happened to be on a pop-up window. I know he was aiming for R&D, so I put my pop-up window there. But him paying one with the fem prevents me from getting the credit on the pop-up window. So that's a shame. But it still costs him one more every time to run there. He didn't win. Lucky. Lucky that was not an agenda. It would have been game over. Yeah, look how much it drained him to run R&D. All that money gone. One data sucker left, right, to get the one access. Just to get the one access. I'm going to defend R&D even more, right? And I'm going to draw cards. Oof. I should have drawn the cards and then defended R&D more, but... All right, he runs HQ. I can't let him get in there. I think I drew an agenda when I was drawing. So I bring out my Caduceus. Uses a data sucker and two credits to break it with Femme. One for the toll booth. He basically loses everything, but he gets his Desperado and data sucker back. So he's got one credit, one data sucker token. He access one card. He could have won, but he didn't. But he didn't. I guess that was a one in five chance, maybe. I think I'm holding a Beal. Um, yeah. Oh, what I wouldn't have given for just a quandary here, right? I mean, would have been so much better just keep him out, right? Not have to, not have to res all this stuff. Right, he's taking his money with his magnum opus. You probably thought that that was Ash, and I'm sure he thought it too. But Triple Advance, the NAPD that was sitting on that sand sand the whole time, it was sitting there for turns, for days. And now, suddenly, we're in trouble. The score is 6-6. Six six. I have an Astro Strip token and a Res Sand Sand. R&D is a mighty tower. I only have two credits left. Um, and but I'm gonna get a pad campaign credit if he doesn't trash it. He's only got three and a data sucker, right? He spent all the money. I drained all the data sucker counters. Trashing the sand sand is pointless now. Unless the only agenda I have is another NAPD. But if it is, I don't think he can score it because um, the amount that he would have to pay to score it, um, right, plus get into the server, he wouldn't have four left. So I think that's another Caduceus in R&D, which is going to make it super expensive, <laughs> but I couldn't res it. So he bypasses the pop-up window, he breaks the Caduceus, he breaks the ice wall, and he clone ships the sharpshooter, right, which he has enough memory for. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. And he access one card. It's not a winner. It's my turn. And I had a Beal in hand. That's it. 
Whoa, what a tough comeback there. Um, yeah, I just, you know, his breaker suite was just not, it, you know, it didn't go with the magnum opus uh, very well, right? Is, you know, the Desperado and the Data Sucker, they pay off when you spend your clicks running. Yeah, I'm showing him the code gates I wish I had. Uh, the RSVP would have been, right? That's, I was so happy with, that's why I left the NAPD in that remote for so long because I knew the RSVP would keep him out. Right, it wouldn't let him score it, um, and it was pretty. It was safer there than it was in my hand. Um, but yeah, wow, that's. Whew. So I squeezed it out, squeezed it out there. Um, yeah, so oh right, like I was saying, the Desperado and Data Sucker, they make you big money when you're running constantly and getting successful runs all over the place, right? But because he was not getting successful runs. He was spending his clicks not running, but on Magnum Opus, right? Um, they weren't really paying off for him. And the successful runs that he could get were expensive, right? It was not easy for him to get a successful run. I guess he could have ridden, run archives a bunch. It may have been more economical for him to run archives a bunch, um, Right, because running archives of Desperado and Data Sucker gives you the credit from Desperado and a Data Sucker token, which is basically worth two credits if you use it on a fem. So that's better than clicking the Magnum Opus. But yeah, um, regardless, it was still he wasn't getting a lot of successful runs. You know, the the Opus, he wasn't able to trash my stuff. He never got a decoder. He had to bring out two fems. You know, I did my game plan pretty much, you know, it was it was slow, it was it was weak early, but it you know, my my plan generally worked, which is tax even against the Magnum Opus. Basically make the runner broke so that they can't get in, right? They have no money, the programs don't matter. That'll give you the window you need to res your sand sand and score something and use your Astro Train, whatever. And that will be game. So yeah, I didn't even have to use the Astro Trip token there. That that could have been a blank three for two. Um, so people are like, oh, Astro Trip is too strong. Well, look, I just I just won effectively not using Astro Trip, right? It, and it could be a blank three for two, and I'd still be good because the taxing power is just that strong. Yeah. Oh well, you saw that I just I just won both games um, against the player who was at the top, and now I have finished the tournament six and two. And that was enough to win the tournament. One other, other player was 6-2, and two, but uh, I won on the strength of schedule tiebreaker. And that's all she wrote. 